Welcome to GRIT, the Real Estate Growth Mindset Podcast, hosted by Brian Charlesworth, founder of Sisu. Sisu provides growth automation software for real estate. You'll hear stories from real estate thought and technology leaders, team owners, and brokers on how they grew their business in a rapidly changing industry. You'll learn how to transform your brokerage and teams into a high-performing and analytics-driven business so you have a new, durable, competitive advantage against disruption in your market. So let's get right into it. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the GRIP podcast. I'm Brian Charlesworth. I'm the founder of Sisu and the host of the show. And uh, for those of you who don't know who Sisu is, we are the growth automation software for real estate, really doing everything between your CRM and your e-signature platform to really manage and grow your business. And today, uh, I have a special guest with me. I've, uh, I've been looking forward to have, having Terrence on the show for, geez, about a month now. And we, we kept having different conflicts happen, you know. Some of those weather related based on Texas uh, losing their power for a week. And <laughs> but uh, today I have Terrence Murphy with me. Terrence is the CEO of TM5 Properties, and he's about to hit a billion dollars. Looks like he's going to do a billion dollars this year, which is just phenomenal. So anyway, I'm excited to hear about that. Terrence also was a football star, wide receiver there at Texas A&M, and uh, actually got drafted to the Green Bay Packers, start, starts out as a rookie, doing having a phenomenal season, just starting out in his first few games and gets injured and uh, actually takes away his football career. So that being said, I think so many people at that point, you know, would give up on their dreams and would give up on, on really life maybe because, you know, you had, you'd basically been on pace and been on track to accomplish everything you wanted in life. And so Terrence uh, took that and all of his competitive nature and skills and now has one of the best top real estate businesses in the country. So anyway, Terrence, excited to, to learn more about all of that today, but maybe you could share anything else you want as far as an intro. Yeah, man, just uh, excited to be here. Thank you, Brian. We're excited to build a friendship with you and just talk technology and stacking and just prop tech and everything that's happening in the real estate space. The, in, the innovation is coming into our space is exciting. But yeah, just born and raised in East Texas, single mom, humble beginnings, learned hard work. I was an entrepreneur at 12 years old. I had my own loan business and it wasn't just neighborhood loans. I actually had commercial clients where I was mowing doctor's offices, dentist offices, things like that. My mom didn't have a truck. So she, we would put my lawnmower in the back and then tie down her trunk to keep the <laughs> keep it from flying up and she would take me to the city man i'm a country kid she'd take me to the city drop me off i'd, I'd mow those yards with those doctors and they paid me and i you know we didn't have cell phones so i sit up under the tree with my water bottle and my snacks and wait on her to come get me and you know just those things at 12 really just taught me a lot about hard work and dedication and i, I now being an entrepreneur i understood that i've been an entrepreneur my whole life and so i had a car business I had a little video game business where I was trading games and stuff. And so I've always kind of been a hustler like that. And then I took that same mentality to my books, um, you know, and my first couple of scholarships were all academic scholarships, but I ended up getting a full ride to Texas a and on a football scholarship. Had a really good career here. I came in as a two-star recruit and just worked my way up to the top. I was like a two-star guy. I was on like the 10th team, literally. And by the end of camp, I was on second team and, my first game at Kyle Field in front of hundreds of thousands of people, I caught the game winning touchdown. That really kind of set me on a on a path of success in my career. I left this with all the records. Um, I was a three-time academic all-conference, which is one of the things I'm proud of. Graduated and then went to the Packers, played there. And then after I retired, I was just praying to God, give me something I can be passionate about. And he gave me real estate. And so I started doing development and uh, started investing, redevelopment. And that's kind of what led me into my real estate career. Awesome. So I love that it goes back. You said you were 10 years old when you started your lawn business? 12. 12 years old. Okay. 12 years old, starting a lawn business. And great. I mean, I'm glad you pointed that out. Doing lawns for companies is a totally different business than doing lawns for residential. Yeah. So like at 12 years old, 
I think this is important because this, this is like, this is your nature, right? How did you go in and negotiate these contracts with these <laughs> businesses at 12 years old? Yeah, well, it started with a mom who was fearless. Uh, my mom was hard on us. She was really hard on me. And I didn't understand it at the time, but she really pushed us to, you know, chase greatness. And she was, you know, I mentioned it to her and I had a doctor, actually a doctor's appointment, you know, and she said, well, stop talking about it and put together your, what you're going to talk to them about. I didn't understand that was a pitch, but I wrote down this little pitch and I was ready. And when we got to the doctor's office, she said, all right, tell them what you said, you told me. And just kind of just step back and say, figure it out, right? And so I talked to the doctor and said, hey, you know, I'm starting a business. I'm doing this. I gave him my pitch. He said, well, it's funny that you asked because we actually just, the people who were doing our property, you know, we just released them. You can do mine. And then, you know, you ought to go next door to the dentist office. You ought to go down the street to that. And I just started door knocking. So I was door knocking at 12 years old and just converted them to clients. And I think, you know, a little bit of it was them saying probably, being taken aback that a 12 year old would have that kind of moxie to even ask for that kind of business. Yeah. So, but one thing I did do, and I know I did, I did it with meticulous attention. It's like when I weed eat it, it was perfect. When I trimmed the bushes, it was perfect. And I've always been that person. So that just kind of carried over into my life. And that's where football and books and then now into my businesses that we started that are all real estate centric, we've uh, kind of created them from that same DNA. Yeah, I mean, it's it's obvious, Terrence, that everything you do, you do it at the highest level. So, and it sounds like that started really, you know, when you were just a, a young kid. And it sounds like a lot of that credit's due to your mom. How many how many uh, siblings did you have growing up? So I have five siblings. Um, we had a real big family in East Texas, huge family in East Texas. But that's where even the podcast grit that got my attention because I've always my mom talked to us about grit in the eighties, you know, in the nineties. You know, now it's a big word; it's it's got a lot of attention behind it. But she always talked about perseverance and grit, and um, you know, I look back at that and I'm like, you know, that grit is what has helped me succeed. But what I've learned as an entrepreneur, grit is not the only thing that you need to succeed. You also got to grow. You got to have systems. You got to have processes, and that's where I've really taken that. And I've taken the grit, the hard work, the perseverance, and tried to piece it together with the right processes and systems and people. And that's what we've used to scale our businesses. Yeah, well said. I mean, I I think you're right on. Like, grit is so important. And people that don't have grit, like, they give up. When something hard hits, they give up. They don't. But then you've also got to have growth mindset, which is something you're talking about there, right? I mean, when when you're faced with a challenge and you fall down, how do you get back up? Right. How do you turn that lesson into something that makes you stronger? And so I think I think you're the perfect example of that. And, you know, becoming a professional athlete and then getting injured like that. So I, I'd love to hear just like what were your thoughts when that happened? Because I, I have an experience where I had an opportunity to sell a business for hundreds of millions of dollars. Didn't because of just some different things going on with my board and different things like that. Felt feeling like we were a billion dollar business. And like that, that hit me, that impacted me at the time. I want to hear just like, what kind of impact does that have on a person? To, and I, I wanted to be a professional basketball player growing up. Right. Yeah. Um, and then actually injured this finger playing football and it, it basically destroyed my basketball career. But yeah, I'd love to hear just more yeah. about like, like what, are, what are the thoughts going through your mind when that happens? Well, the one thing I've always lived by is, uh, you find out who you really are when you go through trials and tribulations. You also find out who are the people around you. Because I always say, like, your biggest successes and your lowest lows is when you find out who really has your back, right? Because when you're just kind of here, no one's really – but if you were to sell their company for a billion dollars, you would have found out who was around you real quick, right? Yeah, right. So, when, I, when, when the injury happened, it was obviously a shock. I was set to have a really good career. Aaron Rodgers was our first pick in the draft that year. I was the second pick. We were roommates. We were good friends. I got brought in to be his guy. Um, and I was playing with Brett. I was already number two in the NFC behind Steve Smith and kickoff return average. So it was happening. You know, Monday Night Football, I'd already had two or three big catches. and God had a different plan, man. But I'll tell you, it's, it's, one of the, it's, it's one of the harder things I've been through in life, you know, being paralyzed from the neck down. But I'm just grateful that I'm able to be semi-normal. I still have some issues, but 
I'll take that any day. And I just had to learn to, to really kind of like rebuild myself, you know? And one of the hardest things I see people struggle with who have been successful at anything, and then they have to transition, is they try to transition and start at the level they were when they left the other career or other path. And I had to humble myself, go back to the bottom and start over, you know? Because everything that I did, you know, I led Texas a and football team. I was the face of the football team here. I was a top draft pick. All my branding was around football. It wasn't around business. And at that time, social media wasn't really catching on. Um, and I just had to learn, okay, what do I need to do to recreate myself? And and I and you know, one of the things I did, I went through depression. It was, it was a it was tough. But to come out of that depression, I had to remind myself to dream again as a kid, like recreate those dreams. Cause man, if I don't have dreams and passion, I can't live. And I learned that through that process. Like if I'm not passionate about something and I'm not chasing something, then I'm done, man. And so I just had to recreate myself. And I remember I'll say this and I'll stop. The Green Bay Packers won the Super Bowl a couple years later. And I'm watching my roommate, Aaron Rodgers, standing up there with a trophy in Dallas, in Texas. I'm from Tyler, which is only an hour away. And I remember I woke up the next morning and I said, real estate's now my Super Bowl. And so that's when I went after it and created our brokerage. It's about to hit a billion in sales. We're creating other companies. And that's what that's the pursuit I've been on. Yeah, that's amazing. So did you just say you were paralyzed from the neck down? Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you get hit and you're carrying on a stretcher mm-hmm. off the field. And I mean, what's going through your mind at that point? Like, man, it's all a blur at this point, bro. And um, honestly, you know, what I've done is I've filled it with positive thoughts. And I've taken those experiences from football, those teammate experiences, those game experiences, the lessons that I learned. Like I tell people, I work for a billion dollar company. The Green Bay Packers is evaluated at you know billions, right? I wasn't just there catching touchdowns and watching how they ran the organization. Yeah. And the Packers is, you know, if you look at how they run the organization, they're one of the better organizations on how they treat their players. And so I watch that. I learn from them. I talk to them. I ask questions. And when I created my organizations, um, you know, around my brand and what we were doing, I said, you know, how can I set it up in a similar fashion that I treat my people the way I wanted to be treated? Yeah, well, you've obviously done an amazing job of that. And congratulations on just, I mean, just the fact that you're like, you overcame whoever told you were, you were paralyzed from the neck down, you obviously didn't listen to them. So no, I wasn't hearing it, brother. You know, it, was, <laughs> it was a process, but it was all through just hard work. And I had a lot of people praying for me, man. I got so many emails and text messages. And like I said, that was before social media blew up. So I can't even imagine how many messages I would have got if I had an Instagram account and stuff like that. But, um, but in it all, it, 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 you know, it really set me on this path that I am now, which is I'm fearless brother. Like I have no fear of anything because I know at the end of the day, what's going to happen is going to happen. You know, that play, I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And I was helping a teammate out. He fumbled the ball. I just picked it up head to head. I got hit harder in high school. So it wasn't even about the hit. It was just meant to happen. And so now I got to learn from that. And then I just, so that's when people say, man, you're you're starting this company. You're doing that. You're doing that. I'm like, yeah, why not? Yeah. I'm fearless. I'll go after anything. So, so two years later, Green Bay wins the Super Bowl, and you decide you're on a new mission, right? You've got a new Super Bowl, and it's real estate. How did? Let's talk about how you got introduced to real estate. How did you get into real estate? Yeah, man. And and again, I hope everyone's just paying attention to this because your mindset. Like, I could ask you to go do anything, and I guarantee you, you're going to be successful. For sure. One of the things I tell people all the time, I don't even think about it. You drop me off in the desert, I'll find my way to the water. Like, one of the things I want to encourage anybody listening to this podcast is don't let anyone put these labels on you. Don't let anyone tell you what you can accomplish and what you can chase. Because I was a poor kid in East Texas with no dad, and the list goes on. Um, Had an amazing mom. But you just got to, what do you have that's at your disposal? And don't blame the world. Don't blame someone else. Like, just go after it. You know, recreate yourself. If you got to do it on a quarterly basis, just keep evolving. Because I always say, if you keep evolving, you will succeed at some point. 
But if you don't evolve and you just stay stagnant and you make excuses and you blame people, like I could have blamed the guy who hit me, but I didn't. So I just chose to get into real estate. I started um, investing in Holland Park and some uh, like syndication deals where I was the passive investor or the limited partner and started doing some syndication deals. And after doing that for a couple of years, I, from 2006 to 08, I said, you know what? I can do this. And so I went back to College Station. I started buying up uh, streets and blocks and houses, redeveloping them, tearing them down, going vertical, built a student housing portfolio. From that, people would always ask me, can you help me? I'm like, I don't have a license. So then that's when I got my license, went to Keller Williams for a year. And then I was like, I'm better than this, man. I think I did like seven transactions for a million dollars. And I was like, I'm going to go start my broker. So I started TM5 that next year with no assistant, no website, no brand. I sold $21 million by myself within 12 months. And I'm like, I think I'm on to something. So I started scaling the brokers, adding teams. And then that's what kind of started all of our companies. And we now have a property management company, Asset Hero. We have an insurance company. We have a construction company, Murphy Signature Homes. And we have about 14 to 15 companies that are real estate centric that are all kind of around the ecosystem of a real estate transaction. And we just started scaling it and growing it. And now we're getting ready to expand our brokerage into other markets. We just joined EXP. And so we're looking for expansion partners all over the U.S. right now. Yeah. Congratulations. I mean, that's such a great story. You have like 14 companies now. You started different than most people in real estate. Most people in real estate started because, you know, again, the, you know this, but everyone you bring in, they want to make a six figure income. Right. And it's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go sell homes. And, and so many of them are, are, they really like looking at homes, right? <laughs> they don't realize that it's hard work to go out and, oh, prospect and actually become a salesperson. But it yeah. sounds like you, you really started investing in properties and, and building out this this whole, you know, real estate platform of investment properties, which it sounds like you still own. Yeah. And, and people said, Hey, well, can you do this for me? And you're like, well, I'm not licensed. And you decide to go get a license. And then this whole new world opens up for you. It did. And so, yeah, we started off as investors and then that's when we, you know, really mainly single family rentals, duplexes. And I remember when I, the first time, you know, Kyle field is a big, it's a, it's a huge stadium. It's, I think it's top five stadium in college football. But I started buying up stuff around Kyle Field because I'm like, I know that campus is going to be a good location. So I started tearing these things down and building them brand new. And people thought I was crazy, right? And then as that started scaling and growing, I was like, man, let me get my license. And then that kind of turned into a monster. But now we're investing in commercial uh, throughout the United States, we own properties in different states now, Carolinas, Kansas, Arkansas, Texas, obviously, and um, getting ready to actually do a multifamily and commercial syndication uh, business called TF Pop Equity Partners, where I'm bringing in GPs, or I'm a GP in, but bringing in limited partners to help me do these deals so I can start scaling. And what really challenged me in that, I remember being so focused on just taking care of my staff, my team. And a guy asked me, hey, can I invest in your project? And I said, no, I'm not really raising any money. And he really changed it. He changed the perspective for me. He said, actually, you know, you could do so much more if you raise capital. And I was like, no, I don't want anybody's money. I don't want to touch anybody's money. And I put up this post because my wife asked me, can you, you know, do a better job of celebrating? Because I'm just like, I set these goals, I accomplish them, and then I just move on. I don't stop and celebrate and so we put up a post about us buying a commercial strip center. I think it was Starbucks, Buffalo Wild Wings. And it ended up getting like a million shares on Facebook. And that's when I realized like what I'm doing is inspiring more people than I, than I think about. And I need to take that in mind. And so that's when I was like, you know what, if I can bring some people along, help them invest their money. And that's where the podcast came from. And I'm just trying to do a better job of opening myself back up to the world. Because after my injury, I needed to just get away for a little bit. So Terrence, you now have a new podcast. You just brought this up. Tell us about your podcast. Yeah, man. So I have a new podcast. I just started it a couple months back. It's called the Real Estate Entrepreneur Podcast with Terrence Murphy. And the cool thing about it is my vision for it is we're, we're talking about sales, investing, and entrepreneurship. Now it's real estate centric, but I'm bringing in developers. I'm bringing in multifamily syndicators. I'm bringing in broker owners and team leaders and realtors. I'm bringing in builders. I'm bringing in commercial developers. So if it's real estate, 
it's going to be on the podcast. I didn't want to kind of box myself in. So it's just real estate entrepreneurship, but it's going really well. It's on, it's on everything. It's on Apple, it's on Spotify, it's on YouTube. So yes, it's going good. And you're bringing in CEOs as well, right? Yes, sir. Bringing in CEOs. I just brought in a, a CEO of a big development company who does Jack Nicholas golf course communities uh, around the United States. And uh, yeah, I'm bringing in anybody that's real estate doing anything at a high level. I'm bringing them in and, I'm just getting some really good feedback with the podcast. So it's going good. Yeah. Good. Congratulations. Again, it seems to me like anything you touch succeeds. So do you have something I can invest in? If you've been enjoying Grit, please help us continue to grow the channel by leaving a five-star review and sharing it with a friend. Now back to Grit. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. I, I got, I got, I got an idea for you. You know, it's been fun, man, because I, I, I think there's parts of entrepreneurship that I hadn't even unraveled yet. You know, it's like a, it's like a TV show or a movie or a book. And that's the part that's, I'm, I just light up when I think about it because I'm like, man, I'm 30. I just turned 38. My wife's 36. We started our first couple of businesses in our twenties. Honestly, like we have no mentor. Like we just read and we just kind of figure it out. And I'm like, the more and more that I put myself out there through Clubhouse and through Instagram, and through podcasts and meeting people like you, people are like, so we met Gary Keller a couple of years ago. I'll tell you this story real quick. Obviously, you, if you're in real estate, you know Gary Keller. He's like the Steve Jobs for real estate brokerage. I mean, he's the guy, right? He's the mind. Yeah. And we met him a couple of years ago. It was supposed to be a five minute, 10 minute meeting. And four hours later, <laughs> Me and him and Josh team and my wife were in the room for four hours and just he and I were on the board just writing out like you would have thought we were writing football plays. We were just going back and forth. And that day he said, I just want you to know, man, you're different. You, your mind is very different. And he was like, whatever I can do to be a part of your journey, I want to be. It. And so people like that is so motivating, inspiring. And now I'm just excited to start meeting more people like you guys. Yeah. Well, so I've, I've heard people talk about Gary bringing them in and, uh, was that was that after you left KW? Yes, I was going into brokerage. That was after. It sounds like it because that was after Josh Team came on board, right? Many years later, I was at KW in like 2010, 11. So we yeah. reconnected, I think, in 2019. So it was like nine years later after we left, and um, yeah, it was just just two real estate guys talking shop, and then we realized we had a lot in common, and I, I realized like how motivated I was when I left the room, and I was like, hey man, can we stay in touch? And he's like, yeah, let's do it. And so he just genuinely loved on me and my wife, encouraged us, inspired us. And yeah, so yeah, he's just he's just a sharp guy and a, and a real estate mind that we had learned a lot from. So Terrence, it seems to me that you, like, whether it's Gary Keller, who is a master mind of real estate, right? I mean, the reason real estate teams exist is because Gary Keller taught everyone, this is how you build a real estate business. Yeah. Uh, but also when you went to Green Bay, not many players were probably asking questions, you know, about how they're running their organization. So you've just got this mind that's always thinking all these other things and you're just always learning and growing. Uh, have you always been that way? Like this is something you've always done is just ask a lot of questions and, and see what people are doing and learn from it. Yeah. One of the things is I'm big on like studying and watching people. I'm a people watcher. Um, from afar or whatever way that I can get knowledge and wisdom, I'll get it. Um, and when you're a kid who didn't have a lot of resources, you have to piece things together to be successful, right? Or you can make, make excuses and say, man, my life is hard. I don't have this. I don't have that. And I just chose to go the opposite route. I'm not judging anybody who did that other option. And I've had those days where I was frustrated because I didn't have the resources. But I was like, you know what? If it's out there, I'll find it some kind of way. And I've just always carried that that mentality, not, not, not a mentality of lack, but a mentality of like, I'm gonna go get it, that hunter mentality. Um, and yeah, so like Gary, you know, we were really getting ready to maybe franchise our brokerage or, you know, join one of these bigger conglomerates. And, and you know, we talked about the expansion model. And um, so we're getting ready to do the expansion model just because it makes more sense because the teams, the old brokerage model is dead, which is why EXPs and Compass Companies like that are popping up, Redfin. Um, and so we're getting ready to expand the Terrence Murphy team through our through EXP to different locations around the United States. Because the one thing I know how to run a team, individually by myself, you know, 
with one assistant, I was doing 40 to 50 million a year in sales volume in a small town, just me and one person and while running a brokerage and other companies. So I'm taking that model. I'm really doubling down on it. And I'm going to find 20 expansion partners in the United States and I'm going to get them to 50 million a year in sales. So my, my goal and dream is to do 20 expansion teams doing 50 million a year, which is the 1 billion in sales. Per year. So Terrence, one of your special talents is you've always been able to get luxury listings, luxury properties. Yeah. I think that's something that everybody wishes they knew how to do. But like, how is it you were able to successfully come in and accomplish that? And now you continue to do that, which is why you're able to, as an individual, sell what a lot of teams might sell, you know, with five or six or 10 people. So, yeah, I think, you know, Tom Ferry Conference 2014, I'm always going to give Tom Ferry the credit. I went to a conference in San Diego with him, him and a couple of my teams, and he called me up to the stage. I don't even know how he knew I was in the stands. But he called me up to the stage and asked me some questions in front of everybody. And it really changed. It changed the trajectory of my career in real estate sales. But one of the things he said, there's so many tasks on a transaction. I think it was like 180. And he talked about teams like we mentioned earlier. But he said, if you're going to do that for a $300,000 deal, why not do it for a $1.5 million deal? It's the same amount of tasks. Yeah. And I remember going, walking away from there and I told my wife, I said, why am I not the go-to guy in our market? for multi-million dollar ranches and multi-million dollar houses. And from that point, man, I just started pursuing it, really branding myself in that direction. Um, I was already a high net worth individual. Why was I not being a high net worth realtor? And so I started really focusing on that. And that's when I started selling these million dollar ranches, million dollar houses, and really setting my team up around it in the process. Because when you sell a traditional home in your market, whatever that price point is, versus a high end home in your market, it's two different strategies and two different checklists, two different ways to market it. And I just really started focusing my energy on that. And that's, that's the business that I'm going to teach people to scale when they come in as an expansion partner with me. So Terrence, this is, I think the difference between you and, you know, 80, at least 80% of the world is if you decide you're going to do something, it's not just, you know, a lot of people have this thought, I'm going to go execute this and the thought never turns into execution. With you, it turns into execution and you never have an excuse. No, nope. you never have a complaint. And yes, you were faced with challenges just like everybody else, but you, you just learn and grow and become stronger from those. Um, so how did you take that Tom Ferry, which Tom's an amazing guy. I know Tom personally, we're friends. And I mean, every time I talk to him, I learn something, which I love. Tell him I said, <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will for sure. Um, so anyway, like you have this thought, why am I not this guy? How did you go deliver on that though? Like, give us some specifics because you just decided you're going to do it and, and you did it. I think the biggest thing I tell people all the time is you got to be willing to fail. I think that's the hardest part for people in entrepreneurship or changing careers or starting a business. They want it to be perfect. And it's not going to be perfect. It's going to be messy. It's going to be ugly because you're starting it, right? And so, you know, I think there's a quote I've heard is, show me somebody who never made a mistake. That means they never tried anything new, yeah. right? So if you hadn't made any mistakes, you hadn't tried anything new. You hadn't pushed yourself. You hadn't stretched yourself. You hadn't got outside your boundaries of comfort. And so for me, I feel like I have to be in that space. That's why football brought that out of me. 105 degrees, we're out there getting after, beating each other up. And at the end of the game, when the game is on the line, coach is like, who are we throwing the ball? I'm throwing it to me. And so that just created that mindset that when, when, when all the chips are on the line, who wants the ball? You know, I never became the Kobe and the Michael Jordan, but I'll tell you, I can't tell you how many teammates after the Bulls series was over with would text me and say, I didn't know you played for the Chicago Bulls. Like, just trying to be funny because – they said Jordan and I had a lot in common. And I think it's just, I've never met Michael Jordan, but it's just those different mindsets. And I, I guess I just was wired this way. And then I've cultivated this mindset to just find a way. And, and so for specifics, I always go and write down why I'm doing it. What's my big why? Like, why am I wanting to pursue being a high end agent? Mm -hmm. And then I write down who are the people that are going to help me. And, you know, like, like who in my team can already help me? And if they're not already here, how can they help me get there? 
And then, okay, now that I know my why, now that I know my who, then it's what steps that I can do to get there more efficiently. Um, and not just fast, because everybody wants to get somewhere fast, but how can I get there efficiently with the right systems? And then it's what am I going to do about it? Like I give myself uh, a deadline. So like one of the things I would always tell my team is almost ultimatums. Like by next fall, you know, let's say September of 2022, I'm going to do this or by third quarter of this year or by August 1 of 2021. And I'm like, all right, I give myself a deadline. Sometimes it's three weeks, sometimes it's six months, sometimes it's 30 days. And then now I put it in my calendar on that deadline day in all caps. You can't miss it. Did you get it done? Yeah, I love it. Uh, which is, I can tell you do that over and over and over again because you just walk through that like second nature, right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, TM5 properties, obviously I know where the TM comes from is five. Is that your number? Yeah, so the five is a lot, man. It's, um, you know, one of my favorite um, scriptures is Matthew 5, 14, salt and light. You know, at the end of the day, we're all, gonna, we're all here just for a short time. And um, the goal is to make an impact and, and to season and be where you're impacting people. So Matthew 5 is that. And then my number was number five at Texas A&M. Um, I graduated class of 2005. So at Texas A&M, that's a big deal what class you graduated. And then I achieved one of my biggest dreams and goals. I've been saying since I was five years old that I was going to go to the NFL. And people always told me it wasn't possible. And I achieved that in 2005 in the NFL draft. And so... This is a lot to the five, but that's where the TM5 comes from. Um, it's just a part of my branding. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Uh, so you have 14 companies. How many of those share the name TM5? Some of them have the branding in there, uh, but we've really, you'll see uh, on our web, my website, you just go to terrencemurphy.com and go to go companies. I have them on there. And so they either have the maroon, white, and yellow, which is obviously Texas A&M colors, Green Bay yellow, but also my high school was yellow. So that's where the maroon, white, and yellow comes from. And then are they black and white? So some of my companies are all black and white. Most of them are maroon, white, and yellow. That's kind of been our branding. Which, by the way, congratulations on your branding. It's, uh, you know, so many people don't really look at branding when they go to build a company, but your branding is on point in every one of your companies. So I've, you, I've noticed that and what I looked at. So thank you. Shout yeah. out to so anyway, great work on that front. So is there anything you'd like to share just kind of like as a closing thought, as a just last advice? And then I have a couple of questions I'd like to ask you just kind of more, more casual questions, but just like as a advice that you would give to, to anybody like wanting to, to get into real estate or wanting to build a business, any business, um, just like what would be what would be some advice that maybe you haven't shared on this so far? Yeah, I would tell them um, now the tools are out there, man. You got YouTube. You can watch anything on YouTube. You, there's podcasts. There's Audible. You know, just investing yourself. Your best asset that you may have is yourself because you know that person's not going anywhere. They're going to be in the mirror every day and invest in you. Like, whatever it takes, go to seminars, find a coach, find a mentor. Read books, do a 52 book challenge where you're reading 52 books in 52 weeks, right? Like whatever it takes to push yourself to that next level, just keep evolving, keep growing and find people that have this mindset. Not the people that says, hey, Brian, I know you're getting ready to start a business, but man, I'm not sure you want to do that. Like those negative naysayer, small minded, energy sucking vampires, right? Like nobody's interested in that. Like get around people that stretch you and force you to be a better you. And honestly, get around people that are doing more than what you've done because they're going to drag you up, right? If you're always the smartest person in the room, then you'll be the smartest person in the room. So that was a lot, but yeah, that's what I was, yeah, that's, 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 that's what I Such great advice. I mean, always be growing, right? Yeah. Um, and, and I love your advice on, you can't choose your family and your family. It sounds like your family brings you up, Terrence, but a lot of people have those families that, don't help them believe that they can do anything in life, right? They, they pull them down. If your family's that way, you can't necessarily get away from your family, but just don't talk to them about business, right? No. Talk, to, talk to people like Terrence about business who are going to let you know you can do anything you want yeah. uh, and be there to support and, and, and lift you up. So yeah, my podcast is all about that. 
your podcast is all about that, like grit, like, like we're telling you there is a way, just find it. And um, at the end of the day, it's called self-confidence, self-belief, self-whatever. So you got to protect that self mentality because yourself can also push you down too. And so if you're not putting the right things in, yourself will also have you walking in fear, walking in scarcity, like all those mindsets. It's not, and you got to get past that. Yeah. I had somebody, I heard this just the other day. They talked about desire plus belief equals show up. Love it. And basically, if you have the desire and you have the belief, you will show up. So if you're not showing up, you got to go back. And like you said, Terrence, what's your why? That's the first thing you're saying every time, right? You've got that why is going to give you that desire. Then the second thing is you need to believe that like you can do that. Yeah. Why are you doing it? Uh, so jumping into some more personal stuff, like what do you like to do in your personal time now, Terrence? Do you guys have kids or what's, what's, what's your family situation today? Yeah, I've been married to my wife going on 14 years. We got married in our early 20s and uh, we have three kids, uh, Taryn, Tatiana and, and Terrence Jr. They're all TMs. Um, yeah, we've been really blessed, man. In our free time, we go work out at our ranches. We own ranches around town with cows and hay and we go fishing, hunting, riding four wheelers. We like to travel, so we travel a lot. Um, just you know, looking at play. And it's crazy because everywhere we go, no matter where we're at in the world, we look at real estate. So that's when we know it's a passion. <laughs> uh, and then you know, my my one team I keep up with is Aggies. My Aggie football, I keep up with the Packers. But yeah, we're just hardworking, normal people who uh, love God and love treating people like we want to be treated. Man, no judgment from us. All love from us. Um, yeah, and just, just more of a, you know, everybody's valued in our, our mentality and we really raise our kids to see it from that perspective. Yeah. I already know you do. Uh, I can tell just, yeah. just by, by getting to know you. So you love to travel. What's your favorite place to visit? We love the West coast. Obviously we love San Diego. We actually didn't think we'd like Vegas, but we love Vegas. We love the shows. My yeah. wife and I, she's now, you know, I took her to New York a couple, like three times. She'd never been in New York. And then we went three times in one year. So we, we like New York. We love the kind of Mountain West. So Salt Lake, Park City, you know, Montana, Jackson Hole. We love that area. So we just love traveling, man. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, next time you're in the Utah area, Park City, whatever, that's where I'm at. So make sure and look me up. Let's get together. Bro, are you in Park City, seriously? Yeah. Well, we, we're in Salt Lake, so just, just, yeah. We just, we just, uh, we just uh, got a place out there, so we'll talk about that. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. In Park City. Oh, very cool. That's actually where my wife and I will end up in five years when our youngest is out of the house. We will plan to move to Park City, but for we, now. We need to talk, man. We may be neighbors. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, well, I know you just made the move to EXP, and... Doing that, Terrence, after this, talking to you today, I know I, I know I want to work with you after talking to you today. So uh, I'm sure there are a lot of other people that are listening to this that want to work with you as well. So you just made the move to EXP. How can people best get a hold of you to learn more about that and see if there's an opportunity for them to work with you? Yeah, man. Uh, just call my office, 979-703-1979. Or go to my website. It's just terrencemurphy.com. And just fill out the contact button. And it's just T-E-R-R-E-N-C-E, Murphy, M-U-R-P-H-Y.com. Uh, or shoot me an email. Uh, also, my Instagram account, I get a lot of messages on there. Uh, it's just Terrence Realtor. So just Terrence, and it, <clears throat> R-E-A-L-T-O-R. But yeah, man, we'd love to connect. I'm finna really expand. I'm just trying to find people that I can help grow. Because uh, we got a machine that works, and now it's time to scale this scale it throughout the United States. And that's where EXP affords me that opportunity to where before, you know, when I want to go to different markets and go to different states, I got to get a broker's license. I got to go do the classes. Now I can be in California. I can be in Utah. I can be in Florida tomorrow. I just got to find the right partner. So I'm looking for expansion partners that are doing 10 million at at minimal because I can take 10 million and turn it into 50 million um, with some systems and I'll help them do everything else. Okay. Awesome. So you guys know how to reach Terrence. Again, everyone, thanks for joining us for this week's episode of the Grit Podcast. Make sure and share it out with your friends. 
give us a five-star review, do the things that will help us continue to get guests like Terrence on the show. So Terrence, great getting to know you. And I know I'm going to get to know you a lot better in the coming years. So looking forward to that. Looking forward, bro. Thank you for bringing me on. Yeah, we'll see you. See you, bro. Thank you for joining us on our podcast. If you have an interest in a free seven-day trial of Sisu, go to sisu.co, S-I-S-U dot C-O. Make sure that you use the coupon code GRIT, that's G-R-I-T, to waive all your set of fees and receive a 10% discount on your subscription. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast and want to subscribe, search GRIT, the Real Estate Growth Mindset on iTunes, Spotify, or Podbean. And with that, we'll catch you next time. Take care.